This is so good. a lot of my uh, heritage into the, into the game. Yeah. There's so many levels to it. This will be the intro and outro for this show. Welcome to Ignite the Spark Within, a podcast designed to do just that, ignite your spark within you. I'm your host, Sarah Malone, owner of Spark Fitness and Lifestyle Coaching and voted Yahoo Finance's top 10 female coaches to follow in 2021. I believe everyone has a fire inside them, a powerful purpose, a story waiting to be told, and everyone can uncover and unleash this power. Every day you have the choice to either let your experiences shape you or take control and use your experiences to shape the world around you. You were made to experience happiness, freedom, joy, purpose, love, passion, and abundance. Disrupt the status quo, think for yourself, and join forces with those around you doing the same. Join me for thought-provoking conversations along with the strategies needed in order to help you ignite your spark within. You can, you can see people do this, like, especially in our community with, with healers, um, or generally speaking, this is what first turned me on to music as opposed to being like an NHLer. I was like, there was so much competition in the sporting competitive world. It was, everybody was out. It was cutthroat. Everybody was hurting everybody. And then I had this other world, the musicians that were just so forgiving and so understanding and so like inspirational and just oh, trying that right yeah it was just it was such a uh, a polarity and that's what really turned me on to music in the first place was that connectedness that that whole and the understanding of like yeah that's cool man we'll catch it up in three years or <laughs> whatever right like yeah it doesn't matter there's no expectation it's just like it's so much more forgiving and understanding in the music community as a creative anyway myself that's what I've experienced so do you mm-hmm. think that's just because of the nature of the creative space and creative mind that would put somebody in a different mindset in the music place rather than a sporting place oh man we could go for hours on that topic let's alone, talk right? let's talk about it that that in a sense yeah it's and there's still that, like, there is still that competitive nature in the music industry. I was going to say, do you, the, you know, yeah. there, there's such a relationship between those two. It's just that it's not a toxic relationship. It's like, I'm going to compete because like, say Miles, Miles is the best Trump player in the world. Somebody wants to step up. He's going to have to play. And Miles isn't going to stomp mm. that guy. He's just going to look and go. Challenge yeah, accepted. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. You know, you're not, you're not there yet, but it's not like, Oh, you want to dance like in, in hockey. It was in hockey and sporting. I, I found that it was, it was actually from a toxic sense of place. And, and we can talk about that too. The healed, um, the healed masculine is very different than the toxic masculine, you know, like the, oh. the, the, the masculine in the music industry, from what I see anyways, like the healed, competitiveness is about encouraging the other person to be better not about because you want competition that. exactly because if you're like get it this way like perfect example as a drummer people made this thing out of out of electronics called the drum machine <laughs> right 60s 70s 80s those were the the infantile stages of drum machine drummers around the world were losing their shit Cause they're like, Oh no, a drum machine can't come in and report. Well, I mean, but the smart guys, the smart drummers, the ones who are like challenge accepted. If you think that machine can outdo me. And then you've got guys like Neil Peart, <laughs> like your mind. He is the machine was rest in rest in, in, in peace and power, brother. I wish I knew more about music to know who that is, but rush I, like oh. uh, the holy trinity of canada like the three oh, piece, progressive yes. rock metal drummer the guy was a genius not my flavor of drummer but he was an absolute genius 
yeah, right? But, I love the group, but, but he was just like a polyrhythm. He was all over the place. Math. He was so math. Like his, his beats, his grooves and everything was just like, he was a drum machine. Right. Yo. And you've got all these other people playing victim going like, Oh, the machine. It's not like that. It's not like that. It's well, like, well, I, I, I think, I think um, if you're truly an artist, right. You, you know, that a machine could never be a threat because machines don't have something that humans have. And exactly. that's that the ability to be intuitive in the moment, right? Feel the music in the moment and exactly. and get into that flow state. There's no such thing as a flow state with a machine. I know, right? And that's but here's the thing too is apart from the sound of it, being in in the presence of an artist who is in that state is an experience as well as the the sound that you're receiving. Like, I mean, uh, so for instance, you know, my boyfriend, he's huge into music he works mm -hmm. at an amphitheater and so he's yeah. all you guys would totally jam by the way and you know and you know by the way <laughs> we're, just, we're just we're just rolling we're just rolling with this show but um and he just <laughs> left too um but my point is he's introduced me to artists that i would normally never listen to or never have heard of but you hear them live and i'm like there is this isn't something i would just you know listen to in the car but when I'm watching this, when I'm seeing this person oh. in their state and the, what the vibrations that they can make and put out there energetically and musically, it's like, yeah, I can find myself being captivated by that for it's, sure. That is the essence because we all have that strand of DNA. We all have that creative for anybody who, who is out there possibly listening to this saying, oh, these are just a bunch of creatives talking about creative things. I'm not a creative. Bah, 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 and they can't write. Guess what? If you solve problems, you are a creative. <laughs> that's, that's what creativity is it's problem solving when when you're up against something it can be as simple as uh what to have for breakfast shit i'm out of eggs what am i gonna do you gotta get creative you oh mike Whoa. it's almost like you were in my rv today <laughs> right we ran out of eggs and you know what we did <laughs> it's like you we made a yogurt parfait with Boom. and now you know that you can do that so now you know and when, when you can when you do it once you can do it many times Right now, you know, and that's what helps set people up in confidence. And that's the first thing I see when, when people come in through my program or if they start working with me as a musician or as a, as a, even as a podcast host, um, I, I just don't, I don't have that ability to think on the spot. I'm like, okay, well, you're, you're here. Here's your opportunity right now. Yep. I put a question to you. Think on the spot. <laughs> There's nobody it's else practice. There to, to it, help you. Let's practice. It, it, is a, it is a sport. Because it it's it's a muscle that you exercise. And the more you exercise that muscle, like you said, you're gaining confidence to be able to know that you can go into different arenas that are uncomfortable or unknown for you and be able to be resourceful and creative, Boom. even if you don't know anything about it. That's, a, That's what makes people like, you know, you could just walk into any space and feel like you're at home or you can make yourself at home because you feel at home in yourself. That's exactly it. And the people that get awkward around it, there's something internally they haven't yet to resolve, right? And and when they do, when they show up to that same house party or that same get together, it's a totally different world. That's yeah. why I'm, I'm like, yeah, hey, this this conversation's happening in the right place, right time. Like we're we're ready to dial in. Uh, yeah. Speaking of dialing in, I still don't know how to tune my freaking guitar. It's like, that's, that's the real problem. So as long as this isn't distracting, we can keep on talking and I'm just going to, oh, you know what I could do? I could just turn, that probably takes it, care of it, hey? And probably. you know what? We still like the sound of strings. I know, right? It's nice to have guitar. It's, so, um, it's so, an interesting, yeah, go ahead. So stringed instruments are one of my favorites. Uh -oh. And maybe you could share with me mm -hmm. Why? Because I just feel like there's a different vibration Ooh. to stringed instruments. Ooh, we could do a little, we could do a little taste test. Yeah. Um, let me, let me just get this guy playing in the right key here. The interesting thing is about, uh, and, and it's often to do like just to, to touch and sort of shine a light on what could be the answer because it's, it's different for everybody, right? Um, mm -hmm. Vibration, music. We are a vibe, you know, like, oh, Sarah, you're such a cool vibe. Yep that short for vibration. Yeah. So music is that sonically, that's a vibration. So different frequencies 
hit people differently depending on what's going on inside, especially when we start talking about the chakra system. Oh uh, yeah. That's, that's a know big I part of it. On that. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing is that like a lot of people just dismiss that as meta and like, Oh, they're so mm-hmm. metaphysical and they're yes. just hippies and weirdos. And I'm like, yeah, but like your body, like you can't deny it. <laughs> your body is made up of energy. That's what you are. And I also have scientific proof for that too. I mean, as a hypnotherapist, you know, it's so great mm-hmm. hypnotherapy. I love because it bridges the gap between um, kind of like science and mindset and the spiritual, mm-hmm. because what we know is that um, th- mm-hmm. our thoughts literally mm-hmm. manifest themselves as symptoms mm-hmm. in the body. Why? Exactly because it. thoughts create mm-hmm. emotion mm-hmm. and there are certain emotional storehouses, the chakras in the body where mm-hmm. those are more sh- emotions can get stored or dysfunctional mm-hmm. or blocked. Mm-hmm. And then they cause physical issues in that area, like the shoulder, mm-hmm. right? Exactly. We know, we literally know it's associated with the heart and uh, there's something being said in the mind that's blocking, mm-hmm. the, you know, it's so it's my- I've s- and I've also seen it happen where you go into the mind uh, at a deep level you release that and the pain is gone. That's exactly it. And <laughs> nine, no, let's, let's go outcast lyrics. 10 times out of nine, <laughs> <laughs> 10 times out of nine, you will. And I wrote the whole book on it. The, the, the musician's guide to surviving the rockstar lifestyle. My first book was based off of that. I saw a co- a direct relationship between the the three areas of injury it's it's geared towards like the the surface material musicians don't want to feel sore okay cool give them some sort of tool to get less sore they think it's all the physical they feel their neck off they feel their shoulders off they feel their wrists and their elbows off and then they feel their hips and their low back now what do we know about those areas when it comes to chakras throat throat communication what they do for a friggin' living <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and that's twofold listening and speaking. exactly the communication center is where they're seeing a lot of neck and shoulder tightness and they're all cramped up. Then we move down just a little bit into the fourth, the heart chakra heart. They're passionate about what they're doing and, and it's a relationship or lack thereof that they most often have when they're on the road. Yeah. So that feeling of that longing for knee or like that longing for love. Like yes. That is a very common look at any song in the world. Nine times out of 10 comes back to love or something yes. to do with heartbreak. Yeah. Right. And then we move down to the last station, the, the hips, the hips and the low back, the sacral yep. energetic yep. creative center. Yep. <laughs> oh. like, so you think about, mm-hmm. I know, right? So you think about the problems mm-hmm. that musicians face music industry. And yes, I, I love that. That's a title, by the way, music is a, is a sport. Like it absolutely is. Musicians are athletes for sure, because they just don't, they, they train differently. Um, they train in the, in the thoughts of love and they train in the thoughts of creativity yes. and they train in the thoughts of uh, real life instances. And then their, their performance is really the, the podium. Like that's, that's their, that's their shot to convey that message. They're a medium. And might I just message. add, and might I just add to that too? It's mm-hmm. such um, it's such a more vulnerable mm-hmm. space because your yeah. performance is based on literally what's going on inside emotionally. Um, it is an expression of your. It's like mm-hmm. it's like an expression of your deep therapy mm-hmm. with your mind it's, and your heart. And you can imagine when people lack the the control over that and the the awareness of it where they're just living it. This is why we see so many times and why it was such a big thing for me when I first got into the, I had this great idea. I was like, musician wellness, we need this. I thought every single musician could use a coach. Oh, and that is super true. Flip the hat around. Every single coach can use a musician. The literal amplification of their message. Musicians are the greatest in the world or in the world of it. Right. If we look at the history of time, the enlightenment, it was a bunch of creatives. Yep. <laughs> yes. Um, even, even back when um, we we're getting out of the church and everything, and we were moving more in towards even industrial revolution, there were still creatives that were, were the scientists were the ones that were like, those are the creative minds. Yes. They were the different philosophers way back in the day. It was the Plato's. It was the yep. Aristotle's. Right. It was, it was the, and then moved through, we got the enlightenment times and we've got thoughts like Mike Machiavelli and all these different thinkers. And now we're in this 
turmoil of, of what it really means to be in this human experience. And we're looking to the creatives again to guide us out of that. Oh, what if, yes. What if they had a better handle on dismantling this whole victim mentality and they could do it from a place of healing to inspire more people rather than keep them. I saw so many things, even just this morning too, on um, uh, just perpetuating this victim mindset of, of an art, what it means to be an artist. Like it's supposed to be suffering. It's supposed to be hard. You, if you're not doing it, you have to do it. It's like, whoa, no kidding. People are depressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh that. my gosh. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Why would you want to go into creation mm -hmm. with you know it's suffering? It, that's but that's the thing is that you know this. We work with people like this when they're first coming into the uh realizing they're in a victim mindset. They love that. That's a dopamine hit. That's attention. And right now, oh. that's huge, right? Well, that, there's it pays to be glorified. Stupid. One hundred per it, it pays to be um suffering. Yeah. It pays to be in toxicity. You're it supposed pays, to be. It, it pays to be cathartic. Yeah. yeah and there are other ways. Yes. <laughs> it's the way it is. Normal. Normal behavior. And, and, but there and are other theory. ways to be cathartic. Absolutely. You can be cathartic oh. in love. You can be cathartic in joy. And the point is not to just stay there, right? Like we know that there are waves of emotions that we all go through and that's all fine to use them all, but it doesn't have to be suffering. Even those emotions of lower vibrations, which we know, sadness, anger, jealousy, you know, they, they don't have to be suffering. No, it's, it, it, it's just like, I don't know where it came. Where did it come from? Do you well, have the answer? Where did that come from? Where did that mentality come from? Where was it? Where, when was it cool to be emo? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, let me think on this because I have that answer. There are you two things. You see it a lot too, especially in hypno, probably in the hypno world. You probably see a lot because it's like, like yes. you need to completely get out of that. I really want to learn more about that too. That oh, yes. Like it, it, It's so powerful. So powerful. I literally think hypnotherapy has the ability to change the entire world, to bring world peace. I really do. Big time. Um, because you're that. doing it, because you're doing it on an actual physiological level. You're mm. doing, you're creating change on a physiological level. Your brain chemistry is literally changing. Yep. And that's why it's long lasting. I'll tell you why I think suffering is so addicting because okay. number one, um, well, there are a couple of reasons. Okay. So number one is it, it does meet a human need in the immediate mm. it meets the human needs of certainty significance and love and connection okay you know what you're going to feel when you feel turmoil and woe is me attitude mm -hmm. you feel significant mm -hmm. because people pay attention to you because poor you you feel love and connection in some way in that process because people are like what can i do for you how can i help oh, yeah. you uh, you Connected. know what i'm saying yeah. so whenever we meet three hu of the six human needs it becomes an addiction even though when we really think about it it's not actually meeting those needs we it, it, it's an addiction we're hooked it's like that little that dopamine hit we are hooked like, number oh. two Number two oh. is programming, right? We've been programmed over time that suffer that. Um, so here's the, oh my gosh, Mike, here it is. Okay. You ready for this? <laughs> it feels it's like you need a theme song while you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Here we go. Well, do you listen oh, to my God. show? I do. Yes. Okay. So, so people like the, the thing is when I do that little, oh my gosh, thank oh you. Oh my gosh. Goes, you know, you're going, yeah. That's something's why like, coming in. Yeah. You need, you need like a little, uh, I'll make you a little hook. Will you make you me something? It? Yeah. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh my you know, gosh. You got the, the music that can yeah. accompany it. <laughs> yeah. It, I, I'm telling you right now, if you make that, I'm going to put it into my show. There you go. Cool. Okay. So here's what it is. We've been actually <laughs> trained to move away from hard emotions. Mm -hmm. We've been trained to move away from pain and get out of it as quickly as possible. And what that does is it may seem like an oxymoron, but what it does is it trains us not to truly address the suffering, get away from it as quickly as possible. And you, what, what you do is you're like right on the precipice of change and freedom. If you mm -hmm. can go through the hard emotion, but people are like, no, no, get away. 
and they go right back into their suffering. Of course. Yeah. And so that every time a hard emotion comes up, instead of going through it to get to the other side, which is freedom, they stay in that suffering state because it's not pretty. It's not cute. It's not acceptable to, to, uh, to actually get curious about hard emotions. What happens if you solve it? Oh my gosh, you get healed. You get, and, and now you don't have the opportunity to live that same pattern. What got you all that attention? It's like, oh shit, you know? Yes. So that's in and, of itself, it's scary. Yes, because that's your identity now. Exactly. You, it's you like just a tra- thrown the whole story out the window. <laughs> a, 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 yeah, trauma identity. It's like, well, now um, who's going to connect with me if I'm absent of all of this turmoil? Oh, man. Very interesting. And they don't know how to go about it. And then, you know, uh, of course, our system isn't set up to, to really um, encourage that type of healing because it's a moneymaker. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a money maker. Okay. Wow. So much to like unpack on that. And I want to, I want to, yeah. you know, bringing it back to music too, to say in some ways, I think that mu- like, so music is so healing, right? Mm-hmm. It can also reiterate that suffering pattern. That's literally what Hollywood is doing right now. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. They're trying to keep it in there. I mean, there's there's lots of history, and and if you're around the camps that I'm around, there's there's the uh, the conspiracy theorists, when really it's a it's a reality. I was going to say it's reason, not. It's, yeah. It's not the reason that we standardized something so simple as tuning. Okay. The story goes back in the day. They had you know you have your Austrian symphony, you had your Moscow symphony, you had London symphony. And these were all playing in different tunings. There was no standardization of what that tuning is. Now, for those listening, a tuning is just like the pitch, like every note, A equals whatever, right? And some were playing 444, some were playing A equals 440, some were playing 432. And they went, brilliant idea. And this is, think about this. This is around the same time as the church, the other major big brother controller in our history. Yep. And somebody got wise to thinking we should make a standardized tuning. Let's go 440 flat across the board. Can I just stop you right there and say 44 is my number? Yeah. So this is very interesting. Continue. Great. Learning something new right now. Yeah. No. And so we, okay. So now we imagine all of these Europe, Asia uh, symphonies, they're all at standard tuning of 440 because now with London, if they want to play a piece from Moscow, it's in tune. Cool. I mean, there's other ways of doing it. Why 440? Well, rather than rather than try to explain it, I'd love to let you decide. Cool. Please, I was gonna say, can we hear yeah. this? So yeah, I'm gonna I'm just gonna tune up. I'm not gonna tell you what I've tuned to, and it'll there'll be a little crossover. So if you do some edits in here, we'll play like a little jingle in the middle while I tune back to a different tuning. Okay. I'm gonna play you a tuning and you just tell me which one you like. Okay. okay. Um, I'm going to play something very, very similar, just across the board. Like you're going to hear the notes, Um, right there. And then there. Okay. So we can't hear, can't can't, hear that. You can hear that. Okay. Well, here, let me, let me pull that up. Now you should be able to hear that. Do you hear anything? Very lightly. There we go. I'll just crank better. Okay. There. Now, now we're maxing. Better? Yes. Okay, cool. Let's try that again. So just playing simple chords. Now we can't hear it all. And not really you either. I'm I'm hearing it loud and clear. So if you can't hear it, you let me know. I heard you before. Yeah, you were, right? And it's picking up. So here's what I'll try. Oh. I just did the musician thing original sound was on it was picking up my voice and saying yo you want to hear people okay 
Let's just pretend all of that didn't happen. <laughs> this sounds fantastic. <laughs> Let's call that option A. Okay. Just that, okay? And now we'll play a little jingle in the middle. I'm sure I've got one. Yeah, you. Okay. While I tune up. I love this show. <laughs> <laughs> Music makes everything better. It's just, it gives you permission to take a little bit more time than you need to. And I'm still not going to be able to do it in time, but that's okay. Great music for my listeners. Right? now just make sure I got I'm just gonna give you a, the best opportunity to hear this so we got to make sure they're all in tune so I'm gonna do the exact same pattern just okay. in a different tuning okay May I tell you which one I like better already? Absolutely. I feel like I like number two better. That's interesting. Judging by, because they're, they're all right answers. And you know how you said 44 was your favorite? Uh-huh. Yeah, no, that's a, that was in 440. So this traditionally, that's 440. That's option two. Traditionally, that's where everybody tuned to. This is also known as like an irritating frequency. What do you mean it's also known as an irritating frequency? It, it Would it irritate most people? It does, yeah. Most, really? 90% of the people that you do this test to, they're like, first one for sure. Because 432 is a frequency of peace. And like I said, it's everybody responds differently. That's what that's a beautiful thing with music is that perhaps this wild, wild hypothesis that the person that was in charge of pushing the button and saying we need a standard tuning listened to 440 and was somehow biased towards 440. Yeah. For whatever reason. And that would have been whatever me. Whatever he or she said. Right? Like if it was you back in the day, you'd be like, yeah, that feels great. <laughs> Let's go with that one, you know? But 432 for most people, this tuning here, when I get to an E, I'm going to tune this back down to a little bit lower and you'll feel it. You'll feel it. Like you can literally feel this music. And that's the best thing. It's like when people are like, what does your music sound like? I'm like, oh, you feel my music. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's not a hearing thing. It's like you'll feel differently, right? So when I tune back up to an E, it's like, it's a low E though. Like it's, it's down there. And that's the beautiful thing with frequencies is that you can play around with all that stuff to incite whatever feeling you want. If you want to get somewhere with somebody in, in a coaching situation and they're having a lot of roadblocks in the heart uh, uh, chakra, they've got back pain, physical ailments, they've got a whole bunch of the emotional stuff that comes with heart and relationships and love and passion and all that, play a 639 <laughs> play a song in 639 and they're gonna free up or they're they're gonna feel like they're gonna get really oh i can't deal with this like it is yes. a way to get that stuff i up. try 
I try to explain this to people when I'm playing the sound bowls, you know, depending yeah. on where you feel this and how you feel it could signal either a, a block. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's what I mean is that, so for you, there's, that's why I say it's all right answers is because, because you feel 440, that's just information. That's not right or wrong. That's just information. You feel better and you resonate better with a 440. That says more about you than the frequency. Right. So that's cool. That's something worth exploring, right? Because generally speaking, 432 would be more peaceful. Now there's also, there's a lot of different things. It wasn't like a straight AB. So I'd encourage you to go back and listen, like right one, right after right, the Right, back other. to back. Yeah. Because I probably played the second time better, <laughs> right? Like there's, this is like, there's so well, many things that are different about. Yeah. And initially when you played the first one, I was like, oh, this is nice. I think this will be my favorite one. And mm -hmm. then you played the second. I was like, no, nope, this just hits me different. I can feel there. it in my being. There. And that's all right answers. So, and that's what I mean is that that's how powerful frequencies are. Same, same friggin' patterns, different tuning by eight hertz, eight hertz. Like it's, Let me ask you this. Yeah. Do people's voices have certain, I mean, this is probably a yes, have certain frequencies that could be either healing or... 100%. Because you know when you hear somebody talk and you're just like, ah. Yeah. And then you hear someone you're like, Ooh. I can listen to that voice. Yeah. Yeah. They're like butter. Yeah. Butter. Absolutely. absolutely. That's what that's part of my job in looking for voice actors is I want people that with the butter voice, it can be you a want me as your voice right? actor, yeah. Mike. And, and that's the thing <laughs> is that you do have a very, cause I have a cheat sheet called an EQ guide, right? So when you come through, I plug your, your voiceover demo in and I just plug it in and watch the EQ, watch what happens on what areas of, of, uh, of the frequencies and that alone without even listening, I could just watch. I could just watch and be like, yep, good voice. Cool, we can use that. Wow. Because it's it's going to hit a certain range. And yeah. if it's peaking in those areas that are like, eh, grind your gears, I I would I would be hard pressed to find a lot of jobs for you because there are just voices that hit different. <laughs> That's the nicest way I could say it. Right? <laughs> it would be very difficult for you to get a lot of gigs. <laughs> in that industry or any industry in any industry yeah because it's just like people don't understand that um that those things matter how you make people feel in your it's, presence is everything it's absolutely everything it's it comes back to everything is me i feel oh man there's a skit on snl uh where bjork <laughs> <laughs> and she's like throws nickels into a washer. She's like, bling, bling, everything is music. <laughs> like, it's true. I, I'm like Bjork is the coolest, right? But it's, and it's true. Everything is music. And when we, and that's why I say like for a long time, I used to think every coach um, or every musician needed a coach. And quite contrary, it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship. It, it we, uh, I get to play duality in both worlds, right? I get to help musicians get their message out better and be healthier in a holistic perspective with all of my amazing coaches that are in my world. Um, and then on the other side, I get to help coaches amplify their message to share that even better and really discover and tap into their creativity. And, and when you put those two together, that's the next revolution. That's the evolution for sure. That's the creative. Yeah. Evolution. Yeah. Tell me how you do that with coaches. Yeah. Um, there's, I've got the simple tagline, monetize your message. A lot of folks in the coaching industry as in, there's so many similarities as in the independent artist industry, the music industry, they have this fear of asking for the sale, fear, fear of value. So coaches are no different, oftentimes worse. Like, oh no, I'm just, especially if you're in the spiritual world, how many times have you done a karma class, right? It's like, come on. Like there's value. It's, it's trading time for, it's, it's an energy trade. Energy exchange. Exactly. So the way that I do that with coaches is by tapping into the, the best question in the world. What instrument did you play? Or what instrument did you want to play? What's your favorite song? 
You know, there's so many different things um, that you could you could ask that would be like a fielding question that taps them back into that childhood state where they were a kid and they were driving down the road with dad in the car and they were listening to Zeppelin or something. Mm -hmm. And it comes out that they always wanted to be a singer, but something happened. So I used a lot of my story work in discovering what that attachment to creativity is with, with another coach because every, I'm telling you, every single person is creative because they're coaches. They problem solve for a living. So it's just a matter of maybe it's yeah. not... Maybe it's not necessarily music. Maybe it's poetry. Maybe it's singing. Maybe it's uh, dance. Dance. Yep. Maybe it's art, po uh, pottery, uh, d visual art. Don't matter. I don't care. <laughs> I am not biased on this one at all. It's Everything is art. It, it, exactly. It's, it's finding an outlet because that balances that masculine do with the yin creativity. Love. Yin. And when we can harmonize those two worlds, we become better at both, right? So for me, it's just a this matter This is of, so timely. I have to just right? say this right now because um, as my, like I told you, my boyfriend just left. He lives in Oregon currently. Mm -hmm. um, and so we go back and forth to see each other for, for right now. But like I said, he's totally, he's all into music. It's huge passion and pottery and art and all the things. And we are set to record a podcast on the harmony between masculine and feminine the yin and the yang and what he said too was about pottery being uh the way to really um it was really the healing of, of his feminine mm. in getting into pottery because you know you're working with not only are you working with all of the elements which is beautiful mm -hmm. but you really have to like let go and he's like i never know what i'm making the pottery tells me yeah you just what go. it wants to be that you're the conduit Yes. As an artist, you yes. When people ask me after a show or after a song, like what how did that feel? I'm like, I blacked out. Like I don't I actually don't remember those moments. I don't. Because you're in such a flow state or you're in such a creative blur that everything else just stops. It's a beautiful space to be in and I get I get to tap into that every single day of my life. Like Mike all. That is what I feel when I do podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, and that's Something because that is a, that's, so. The short answer is podcasting because that's what coaches know. Co coaches know they need a podcast. Remember, you got to give them what they need, right? In order right. to be able, or give them what they want in order to then give them what they need. So that is usually, and I say usually because they see it as a business thing. So you can you can sell three things, right? <laughs> you can sell making money that they're going to be they're going to make money, they're going to get healthier or they're going to have better sex or relationships. Those are the three <laughs> things people will buy, right? That's probably true. Well, it's like let's look at it. It's like okay, cool. Those are the three things. So instead of me saying every coach and this is where I started, I was like every coach needs a a song. Ah, they didn't know that though, and that's expensive when you have to explain it to them. Yes. What they did think though is that they needed a podcast because every coach wants to share their message. They just didn't know how. So I'm like, okay. So that's one way. That's like the big, the big entry point for most coaches getting into the creative field because after they do that, they see how fun it is to be able to express themselves through voice. Voice is another thing that we call an instrument. That is your instrument. So if you can use that, the way you are in one is the way you are in many. So now you're a podcaster. Oh, it's not crazy to think that your podcast could go to a beat. You almost started doing it when I started playing some guitar. Like you is like, you know, we, oh, and then the other things that we start with, like the other creative outlets, like maybe I could start writing a little bit. Like I, I journal anyways, maybe I could write a book. What? You went from like never having that <laughs> in the world to being like, I'm going to be an author. How many times has that happened though? As soon as we tap into that creativity, it's a whole different world. How many well, it's like, great it's like a well. Right, exactly. And that's the thing is that you don't have to be just a musician. How many amazing rock stars are also incredible artists? You ever seen Jim Carrey's stuff? Holy balls. That guy is a fantastic artist. Probably here's, better than he is an actor. Here's the thing. When you tap into the well of creativity, there is nothing off limits everything becomes art yeah and everything becomes your expression of your experience here in this world yeah it's and that's really what creativity is it's just an expression of what you're experiencing mm -hmm. that's why that's why art music 
uh, dance, anything is so profound because not only are you witnessing someone else's experience through their expression, you know, you can feel that with them, but most of us, like all humans are, we're so vastly different, but we're also so much the same. Big time. It's, it's just like the, the human experience is, is so common yet so unique. You know, it's like everybody, everybody goes through the, uh, a similar storm just on a different ship. Yep. Yes. And they, and somehow they, they find a different route to the same Island. Exactly. And when they get to that Island, that's, that's the ticket. It's getting across that, navigating that. That's where yep. guides come in handy. Yep. Where, yep. You know, yep. Oh, you know, we're, we're the lighthouses to be like, I'm going to tell you how, it. just don't hit those rocks. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to shine the light and you, you're you going to find your path. If you got to go around in circles for a little bit, you're going to do that. But at least as long as you can see the light, that's okay. You're okay. You sound like you're talking about my life right there. <laughs> in circles, half, half my you know, life. You know what, though? Here is what I found, okay? And I'm sure you can resonate this resonate with this in your line when i set out to write my first book i'm almost done with it now Mm -hmm. when i first started the book my book it it was first something else because i was trying to think of it and control it right somewhere along the way it became obvious to me that i was writing a book about peace and it became a conglomeration of different affirmations for peace and i said okay i'm writing a book on peace um, and I'm just, it's going to be simple. It's going to be called affirmations for a peaceful life. Well, when it became clear that God was delivering this book through me, it also became clear that if you're going to do this, right, you've got to experience chaos in uh-huh. every form in order to know how to be peaceful in all these different types of situations. Yeah. So I embark on not a peaceful life, but a chaotic and painful season of my life. And it's like, it's like this book was writing itself through me. And I feel so blessed because I was learning along the way. I'm like, wow, that, oh my gosh, this is so good. I, it was almost as if I was my own guide through this book in finding peace through that chaos. And, and somehow, some way, I didn't feel, I didn't feel as scared or hurt or as much pain as I feel like I should have if I were not writing that book. Yeah, because you've got purpose. Yeah, and it was like fleshing, fleshing out the knowledge and the truth live in the mm-hmm. experience. Mm-hmm. As you're going through it. And these Rather words than, are coming onto the pages yeah. and I'm like, I don't know where these words are coming from, but it's like <laughs> literally feels like it's coming out of my body and it's resolving itself Yeah. as I'm typing. Welcome to creativity, right? Like that, that's for anybody listening. It's like, I'm not creative. That, that's why that if we were to be able to have, if I had, you know, the key to the city, it would be to change the way that the music industry approaches songwriting because they approach it from a pain point rather than from a healing point it's it's a slight, ah, slight switch oh my gosh that's so because, minor you know what i mean like if if we took the time to breathe and feel those feelings and then think about how we wanted to feel rather than just putting that out there because then look at how many songs are in this victim top 40 category that uh, that i <laughs> that i call anyway and like blame rock Limp Biscuit, le- like even Led Zeppelin, like the, the way back in the day, you did this to me, this, yes. and that. there's such a, it's just a very fine tune. I realize I'm a traditionalist too. It's like, I realize that's a beautiful part of music and the experience of songwriting. And you're now taking that venom and you're throwing it back out into the world. Yes. To poison in an, the in, a, in an unhealed state. Exactly. So if we took the time to just slow our thoughts breathe, sit with it, and write it from a more resolved or what you just described as you're writing, you're resolving, that would be so much more powerful. And that's literally what I'm doing in, in my music. I'm still a coach. I'm just doing that now through the vehicle of music. Yeah. Because everybody wants to come to a concert. Nobody wants to come to a workshop. 
<laughs> oh. well, One word, right. guys. <laughs> well, right. It's like um, everyone wants to feel something. That's what they yeah. really want. Yeah. And, and and this just makes me think too. You know, um, what it really is is it's just a state of the heart. It's about checking your heart state before you start putting things out there. And hey, here's the thing. If there is something that comes through that you need to just be cathartic and put out there, put it out there and then stow it away or burn it. Or, you know, it's like, it's like very conscious creation, right? We have to be conscious creators and not just putting out our experience. And it, yes, does somebody resonate with that? For sure, for sure, for sure. But mm-hmm. then, but then check the heart, tune it just a little bit, right? Because we are an, an instrument. We are the. Yeah instrument literally a musical instrument Mm -hmm. um so just tune it a little bit and then put the message out there but 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 have it be a journey from that awful experience to that healing to say here's what light here's what i learned through it here's the light at the end of the tunnel here's what now i can provide wisdom to you know the world in some productive way instead of just regurgitating the pain and then that just cycles Bingo. out there. And it just cycles and- because now the, the 14 year old kid listening to your song on the radio is just like, they think that that's normal. So they're going to grow up with this story thinking all men are, are trash. Yeah. And I'm sitting here going like, but that was like one person's experience. That's how, oh, that's how powerful my gosh. we can be, right? Oh, here we go. Wait here- a second. <laughs> we got another one. We got another one. Here we go. We're ready. <laughs> Mike, because music is hypnotic. Mm-hmm. Here's the definition of hypnosis. It is simply a brainwave state. It is a lowered brainwave state. When we are in that state of hypnosis, which is a lowered brainwave state, we are being programmed. Mm-hmm. Music is hypnotic. It lowers our brainwave state and we're taking in those messages, whether you can, whether you're listening to the words like, and being like, oh yeah, that's what the words are saying. No, it doesn't matter because the music is putting you into a state in which Mm -hmm. you are now in hypnosis and whatever's being said is being programmed in your brain. This is why it's so important to know what you're listening to and be conscious of that, especially music. Did you know, here's a fun fact. Did you know Stonehenge, Hmm. the Stonehenge, you know, Stonehenge, Mm -hmm. it is, it is set up in a certain way where if you play a a certain frequency in there, the Mm -hmm. way that the music bounces off of the stones will put you into hypnosis, like a deep hypnotic state. Unsurprising. Ancient wisdom like that. That shit's been going on forever, guys. <laughs> like, and now we're like, oh wow, that's so cool. I'm like, yeah, but that was like the way it was because you'd found those little things in nature. Yes. But the challenge came when when we thought we were smarter than nature. Yeah. Like, well, wait a minute. Nature tunes you in real quick. You know, there's a reason all these <laughs> tornadoes and the the animals are coming in. Like, we've got bears in the city. It's like, what? like there's there's a pushback on nature look, right now. Look, Nature's hey, going, fuck you guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fuck you. Well, and also like, you know, homeostasis, right? We need homeostasis. There will there. I said this four years ago. I said, I wonder what the, you know, because nature needs homeostasis. So I was always just wondering, I wonder what the correcting factor will be. I wonder what the pushback will be. And then like a year later, we got hit with COVID and I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Let's go for a ride. Yeah, exactly. It's like uh, the the principle of Darwinism is very strong, right? And it's... It's just, it's a fascinating th- thing to see people light up when they think about all these things that are rooted in ancient wisdom, like ancient, ancient wisdom. You know, the the leaders are modern day uh, Plato's and our modern day Aristotle's or Paul Czech's and, and folks in that vein. They've been saying this shit since day one. You got They've it. Been like, yeah. Like guys, like we need to, you know, you got to go, go do your Taoist learnings and you got to go pay, pay attention to out in the nature because if you don't, nature has a way of sorting you out real fast. Real, real, fast, real and, fast and and not so fun sometimes. Oh yeah, if, no. <laughs> it's like we've got two options, right? We can do it. We can be proactive and do it and keep up with it, or mm-hmm. we can wait till Mother Nature has her way. <laughs> well, that's, that's why I said I'm I'm always prepared with some of the books that I'm reading these the days. Seven the generations seven generations and the seven so, grandfather teachings. These are like the the cardinal rules of life in in my tradition of, of, of Ojibwa, and it's it's simple stuff. It's like honesty truth you know like simple pieces 
It's like uh, it's pretty good. simple when you, we boil it down. It's like truth, love, yeah, freedom, yeah, you know, honesty. It, 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 it's just being, it's just being a a moral upright. In- Keep going. I want to see how many you get. Oh, oh, oh! Truth, how many are there? Uh, yeah, uh, seven. You seven. have truth, honesty, love, love. Yes, yeah. I, I said freedom. Is freedom? freedom. Right? You can, it's, it's not by word, but I could argue it's, um, you could argue that as, uh, as bravery or courage. Okay. Beautiful. Um, how about something like reverence? Yeah. Respect. Reverence. Okay. There we go. Respect. Yeah. Um, what yeah, gratitude. One. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Wisdom, intelligence. I mean, <laughs> right there. So like, yeah. Truth, humility, respect, love, the bravery, humility, courage, yeah. honesty, and wisdom. It's like, you live by that, you're doing good. And the idea of seven generations is that when you take one action, it's a ripple effect. When you take one action, what you do right here, right now will affect seven generations to come. Right? Like, I'll say that one more time for the people in the back. What you do right here, right now is the ripple effect. It will affect seven generations to come. Do you want to know what I think is happening right now, Mike? Mm, please. I think that we are the change for the seven generations to come. Mm-hmm. If you notice, there are two things that are happening in the world right now. Mm-hmm. A massive clearing. And I will just keep it at that because I think we can all know what that means. Mm-hmm. Clearing of darkness. Mm-hmm. Not good. Um. Bad and, <laughs> bad, yeah, bad vibe. <laughs> yeah. And, and also bad decisions, right? Yeah. yeah. Bad, bad decisions. The, 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 the side of humanity that we all don't want to face. Exactly. The darkness. The yeah. darkness. Uh, clearing of that simultaneously with the uprising of, like you said, your creatives, but more importantly, your conscious creatives mm-hmm. will then have the impact on the seven generations to come. That's, That's what cool. we're... I've been I mean, saying that. Yep. Yeah. And, and Mike, Three I have to tell now. you, like, pe- people now are finally to the point where they're like, I want to heal my generational trauma. I had a woman come in. She took a picture of seven generations, her mom, her grandma, and grandma, you know, blah, 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 yeah. down the line. And then her, her child said, mm-hmm. I just felt the need to take a picture of this. She came in for a healing. Just we, we, there was a curse on her family line um, by the grace of God helps my healing sessions, um, remove that curse. And she heals seven generations behind her. Oh, me? And now she'll be healing seven generations in front of her. It, exactly. Cause she's just like, well, I decided. Ended. I, yeah, yes, I decided. I decided. I'm that, ending that was it now. the decision. Like I just, I, so many of us have that power where we're sitting there and going like, oh, well, it's in my family. Like how many times do you hear that? The victim? Oh, well, you know, diabetes is in my family. It's I'm like, genetic. No, yeah, a, yeah. A, a history of inactivity bad is in my family. <laughs> <laughs> and bad decisions. Diabetes yeah. is just the, the, the result. Like, yes. that, that's not the root of it. You have the decision to not take the elevator. You have the decision to like, I love that. I was at the mall, <laughs> a rarity. I was at the mall. Kids are what the, the S the escalator thing is broken. I'm like, no, it's stairs. <laughs> like, guys, like, they, they got to the top. There was no, there was no like, there's no gate or anything stopping people, but they stopped at the top and they're like, Ugh. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> stop. Escalator's broken. I'm like, no, that's just stairs now. And people are afraid of that. So, like, th- oh. this is why we're in the state of where we are in physicality. Yeah. We have these things that are like, doctors western med and everything they're they're prescribing pills over over just simple herbs and simple daily exercise daylight sunlight like getting yeah. outside putting your feet into the soil like these simple things that are rooted in ancient wisdom that is like this new technology <laughs> and, and, and by the way is also part of tuning your instrument big time polarity and and right? when we think so you'll like this when we think universe mm-hmm. una one one verse song one song okay we live in one song Mm -hmm. and we are all an instrument in that song what happens if an instrument doesn't get tuned or doesn't get played it just gets pushed away and then we don't have music or we have a cacophony yeah instead yeah Yeah. 
So thinking thinking of um, that's that brings me back to a, a book that I started reading when I wasn't ready for it. I was like, "What does this, this doesn't make any sense?" But it's uh, Doctor Larry Dossie's One Mind, beautiful book. For put that in some show notes. That is anybody interested, and I I do Larry, caution Larry Dossie. How do you spell the last name? D O S S E Y. E Y. I'll send you. A, yeah, I'll send. I'll send you a link. Um, one of my favorite books ever from um, a mentor of mine who who put me in that rock doc. Like that was my nickname as the musician wellness guy as the rock doctor but well, still am the rock doctor nick, nick the rock doctor i'm yeah. gonna give another i'm gonna give another book while we're here and then i yes. want to hear about that one but this just reminded me it's called um whispering whispering winds of change oh yes i have heard of this. Stuart wild uh yes yes you Stuart will wild. love this book I've, I've heard it, of this book. It's been on the. Oh, top. okay. So it's yeah. a must read. It's so yeah. old yeah. and it just makes you think like, oh my gosh, what yeah. is happening now is just recycled. Yep. It's, it's all, <laughs> what is the saying? I see this meme go around internet. 1984 isn't supposed to be like, it's a, it's a, you're not supposed to be doing it. It's not supposed to be a textbook, <laughs> <laughs> but everybody's treating it as like, oh yeah, let's go do this. I was like, no. No warning. <laughs> this is, yeah, this this was like prophecy. Like <laughs> we're not supposed to be doing this. It's in like here. Here's the, here's the guide. <laughs> no, right. Guide. This was a yeah, warning, it, not a guide. It, it, it kind of <laughs> makes you think, like you know, is that um, a subconscious directive or absolutely? You know, yes, yes, because literature again, literature is a form of creativity, just like what you're talking about with songs. If music is the symphony that can hypnotize and put us into this state where we can accept or reject, it's the same thing with literature. It's the same thing with, that's why I say it's so important for creatives to be conscious, creatives to be understanding. If as They might be malicious. I had this uh, discussion with Adam Chin too, and he's like, there might be some crazy people out there that are malicious, that want to use their music to incite fear, rage, all these bad things, but that's the darkness. And that, that, that could be a thing. The likelihood of the majority of us, we're just dumb to it. We don't know it. We don't understand the actual power. So it's people like us that have the ability to educate and guide that say, hey, actually, when this happens, this happens, and that's a ripple effect. Let's talk seven generations. So when you're putting that music out there from a, 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 a painful point rather than a healed perspective, that can be doing a lot of damage for generations to come. So what if we just took a slight tweak and made that more of a healing state, and now your message goes and can empower humanity? Here's the kicker in that. Mm. In order to do that, one must do the healing. <laughs> I know. So there are two things, like you said, there's, there's so many layers to this because in order for me to create from that place, I've got to do that mm. myself. That's scary. It's scary. Nah, I don't want to do that. Says yeah. the population, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why we're, we're at where we're at because yeah. even COVID exposed us to that. Instead yeah. of, we had two options. We could go look in the mirror and do that work mm -hmm. or we can continue to run. Yeah. But let me, ju I'm just going to say this, you know, ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance no. is pain. It's ignorance is a lot of pain. And the longer you remain ignorant, the more pain it is when you actually begin to feel finally it. come through it. Yeah. So, it so just, just bringing that awareness into it. It's like, you've got to know the potential of darkness at least a little bit in order to be both aware and protect yourself, but also prevent yourself from becoming it without even realizing it. Because That's we all have that inside of us. And if we're not aware of the potential of that, we become, we become a perpetuation of the darkness mm -hmm. rather than a part of the solution. Yeah, exactly. You just you, uh, literally comment after comment after comment on, on that. Again, it comes down to, to glorifying the victim mentality, especially in the creative world. And when we choose to just do like uh, the Mad Max approach, Everybody's going here. I'm going this way. <laughs> you know, yes. I'm going this way. And that's you where and I thought it, it, that's like, 
that's where my album, much like what uh, I imagine your book is for you, my album where that, that's my book. Uh, it just, it happened. I was just like, I'm making music now and this is all in this theme. And it's about taking those things that we all, the very common pieces of narcissism, uh, hurt, pain, and love, hope, honesty, all of these like universal, to use your word, universal feelings, emotions, and showing that it's okay to feel all ends the entire roller coaster, and then use that to actually re-examine while you're in it. You know, that's how the songwriting process works with me. I'm looking at that first verse going like, wow, that's really painful. Where can I take that to show that like I'm moving through that rather than just staying in that swamp? <laughs> Like that nobody wants to be like i don't know i did i did want to be in that part there was a part of me that like oh yeah that feels good like oh yeah let's get some attention but at the end of the day it doesn't really solve anything it's like well now i'm here and now i'm gonna put that out there to make everybody else feel that no let's move yeah. through that and that's how each song really shapes and that's why i say it's a listener supported album too because I want that feedback. I want to hear what people, what it means to them. And if they have any insight on the production or on the, the words and the meanings, because I can integrate all of that. That's how I work as a creative. I bring other people's thoughts in and help express because so, it is universe, universe. This is a symphony that we're all in this. Let's make this one song. You know, the, the artists that are out there that think that that song is yours, the minute you release it, A, you're successful, B, it's no longer yours. That's that's for anybody's interpretation, however they feel. It's theirs. You've done your job. Yeah. Put it up there, right? Yeah. So people that hold on and keep it in the dark and think that that's a scarcity mindset. Put that shit out there. The minute you release that, it also gives you more freedom to go release more stuff. More. Good stuff. And more and yeah. more. It's abundance. Right. Well, look, it's all about connection, right? It just, when you were describing writing that verse where you're like, I felt good. And it's, it's like, what I encourage people to do is identify, become aware of what, like when people say that feels good, I always follow it up with good in what way? Mm -hmm. Because yeah, it's important to be, right? well, and it's important to be aware. There are many forms of good, right? Yeah. Me feeling my sadness when I'm really sad, it feels good at the time. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm in that moment. Mm -hmm. I can feel it. I, I'm, I'm allowing that process to unfold, but staying there begins to not feel good. Okay. Yeah. So if we're aware, if I'm aware of what kind of good that feels when I'm all sad or angry or, or whatever that may be, I know, yeah, this feels good right now because I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing with this emotion at this specific time. But I also know that it's not the type of good where I'm like, this is good for me. No, okay, yeah. it feels good right now. It's not good for me in the long run. So I'm going to move through this and allow myself to feel that goodness. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to continue that journey to the other side. So there's two parts of that creative. It's like allowing somebody to come into your feels with you mm -hmm. because most likely you're resonating with them at either where they are or where they have been in the past or where they will be in the future. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you're also invoking inspiration to say, but, 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 but mm -hmm. here is another option instead of staying there. Here is the way through it. Yeah, exactly. And that's, also that's here is a way to not only get through it, but all of this is information and experience for us to evolve. And you take what you need from those moments, mm -hmm. the lessons, the wisdom, the maturity, the, the awareness, whatever, and then you leave the rest. Yeah. And anything that doesn't serve you anymore, you just leave that there. And now you can go forward and now you're better. Yeah, because you you so, got to because you you feel like that's the thing is that we come back to is that teaching people to feel those emo emotions people associate good and bad neutral neutral guys emotions are neutral they they do not hold a charge right it's mm -hmm. up to you and your perspective how you respond can be good or bad and right? how you define it right exactly so someone when, broke up with me oh my gosh yeah. they took everything from me or yeah. wow they just taught me a lot and I I'm being protected. Yeah. For it, it's it's all whether you think you can or you can't, you are right. You know, it's like all perspective. And when people understand that feeling, especially creatives, when they feel that down in the dumps feeling, which I mean is a lot of the programming that 
it's it's been taught that we're supposed to be suffering artists we're supposed to be starving artists we're supposed to be all these things that's perpetuated for years and years and years since the, the dawn of time i'm sure and when we when we take a, a seat back and just go look at it from out here instead of in it you get a lot more perspective and you have the ability to then decide whether or not you want to stay there right and like that's that, that's the thing you can write from a healed perspective and still have a painful song yeah like, it's like but it's painful and inspirational to be like i see you to your listener be like i see you and i'm showing you the way that i'm i'm still kicking i'm still around mm -hmm. it's not over like here's the song that's going to be your soundtrack to get you through this thing in a nice healed way Right. So that you can feel all the things and still come out of it the other side as a better person. It's growth, learning. So it's all those those losses. Turning those losses into lessons is huge. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So art, art and coaching. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Music is coaching. Coaching is music. Sports are music. Music yep. are, or musicians are athletes. It's like. We think the same way. There's a certain goal. There's a certain purpose. And we generally really, really want to do well. Those are the common traits. We really, for an athlete or a musician, we really want to be the best we can be. We also have this imposter syndrome, which is like a, such a polarity. We want to be the best, but we don't think we're the best. And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> well, and we want, to, we want to be the best. It's, it's this dichotomy of wanting to be the best. What it, like, but the, in order to be the best, you, it requires a definition of someone else. Yeah. That's right? so key, which is like, or, <laughs> or it's mm -hmm. like, it's good to have that drive to be like, I just, I want to strive to be better and better and striving to be better is always a good, a good route to take. Mm -hmm. But there's also the part where it's like, but if no one were listening, if no one were reading, if no one were talking back with me, would I, can I still get so much pleasure out of this? Because it's just pleasurable. Yeah. In and of itself infinite without being play. told I'm good. Infinite play. Infinite play. Yes. When you just create for the sake of creating, I, I wrote a song. It's actually going to release. Um, I got to check the, uh, the dates. It was for Jason Picard, his abundance archetype. He didn't know at the time he was up there. I was working with, um, I was doing the soundtrack for, for Freedom Builder. So I was up doing live sound and, and doing all the, uh, we call it folly for any like live video and everything like that. When you go to a movie, yeah, that's somebody making all those sounds. That's not actually in the movie, right? So I got to do that for Jason's, all of his videos. And then um, he was talking in one of the slides that he was delivering in his presentation. And he started talking about a game of dominoes with his daughter. And this was like the most, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Because I was just sort of half there, half out. I was watching cameras, right? I wasn't really... And then I really glued in on this whole story where they were playing. It was like a Sunday night right before, you know, the work week, the school week and everything. So you can imagine what the mindset's like. It's like, oh, this is our last hurrah of this weekend, hanging out with the family. And they were playing dominoes and she had, she's very smart. And she, every single time it came up, she could play the right to finish the game and win. But she kept on like throwing the game. Like this happened two or three times. Jason only says once, but I, I later talked to the, <laughs> the family. I, I confirmed like two or three times she did this. <laughs> Came her turn and she just threw the game. Because as Jason described, he's like, the kid understands infinite play. They're just playing to play. They love the, the atmosphere of play. They love the game. They don't care about the win or the loss or anything. And this is his daughter because she knew that if she won the game, bedtime, bath time, going to school tomorrow. That doesn't sound as fun as like hanging out with it's dad, playing. Yeah, hanging yeah. out, playing the games and, and hanging with my family. As a kid, that's much more important. If we took that playful attitude to all of our activities in the business world, holy moly, would we be more abundant because we're doing things just for the sake of doing it. And it doesn't matter anymore what the outcome is. It's just the fact that we're doing what we love to do. And that's what's actually going to generate the revenue. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I write songs, I keep that in mind. And the song that I wrote was called Dominoes. And it's an absolutely beautiful song. And it's like, it's, it's everything that you can imagine. I, I literally, I stopped. I was like, guys, because we went cut. I was like, guys, I'm going to go to, the, <laughs> I got to, I got to go. I got to go write this song. You got to go I write. I had this whole, and that's when you're talking about the book. That was me. I was just like, 25 minutes later, song's done. I was like, here you go. 
here's the song. They're like, what? <laughs> I was like, here's the song. Here's the theme it song. It just got downloaded Guaranteed. right into you. It's like, and that thing was on repeat and it still is likely on repeat. I'm very excited to really I can't wait to hear it. When does it come out? Um, You get, if you want, you get a sneak peek right here, right now. Oh, yes, please. All right, let's tune in. Yeah, let's, let's see what... Uh, dominoes. Yeah, dominoes. So this will be out. Um, I'm waiting to hear back if it's going to come out. It's supposed to come out on the 7th, which is tomorrow. All right. So... Um, it, so the time the sure. show is out, this yes, song... Yes, it'll be out. Yeah, be you'll out. hear dominoes. It'll be under my, uh, my artist name, Brave Bear. I'm just going to find the right... Wow. And and just for all my listeners, we will include the song yes. and the book in the show notes. For sure. Okay. Let's see if, tell me if you can hear some noise when this, here, actually, you know what? I'm going to, can you let me share screen that way we can make sure that it comes through on audio? Because sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Let's go here, share screen. Do, 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 do. There you go. Here you should go. be able okay. to share. Got it. We're going to put this up in stereo as well, just for all y'all. So this is Jason Picard's theme song for the Abundance Archetype, which makes sense. The song's called Dominoes, and it should play. Yeah. This is so good. Use a lot of my uh, heritage into the, into the game. Yeah. There's so many levels to it. This will be the intro and outro for this show. <laughs> there you go. That's dominoes. Now, for Guys. anybody playing playing the home game, what do you think? Uh, oh. What do you think about what did you feel? What did I feel? Or where, or anything? What, what, what are your, what's your? I love following up with 
frequency minded songs that are oh yeah oh, yeah, yeah i love i love just like hearing what people experience um it it felt like an upbeat to me mm -hmm. so it brought me up but it also vibed me out so i was like i felt like i could be lurking and vibing but also seeing clearly right it's almost like you're seeing face. and um what i liked about it is hearing the story beforehand right <laughs> curious to, see, to hear what you're feeling when i say this um but hearing the story beforehand i see the game of dominoes repeating in the song mm -hmm. you're yeah. like oh you think it's gonna end and it's like but we're bringing it back in we're and, bringing it back in and that's the point of where where i i believe uh, thank you so much for that because that, uh, that's where i think pop music is falling short right now the purpose of music isn't to just you know get to the next commercial to sell yeah. ads i mean that's yeah. where it is in radio and that's where it is right now and that's why a song over three minutes is out heard of or unheard of that was three minutes and ten seconds and it felt long because we're used to listening to like a minute and a half songs now the thing that I want to highlight here is what you said earlier. Music is hypnosis. If I were to play something on a handpan, like, let's make sure we got, yeah, can you hear that? Okay. Tons of notes, tons of notes, and it's all over the place, and it's like, you can't get into it. If we take the approach of simple. What did I just do? Like, you drop. You saw me drop into that. Yeah, you're like, mm -hmm. and that's what music can do. Mm -hmm. So when you do all this complexity and you're trying to do all of these things, let's relate it back to business. If you're a business owner and you're an entrepreneur and you're a coach or whoever you are and you want to do all of these things all of the time, when we get back to the basics, get my reverb off. When we get back to the basics, that's when people are paying attention because they can drop in and you can let them lose their mind right and that's the importance with hypnosis and that's what that was the whole purpose of that song is that i wanted people to go up i loved how you said that you you felt in a sense grounded at the same time able to take off elevated yes that's perfect yes. <laughs> like, what a world to live in if you could feel grounded and secure and then have the ability to do and take off with the vision and the purpose and everything that's like the epitome of business like that is 100 like, percent yes right this is this is how i listen to music right mm -hmm. there are many different flavors and styles and there are different types of music but the most for the most of the time the types of music that i listen to are those where i feel elevated right it brings me up brings mm -hmm. my being up but it's low enough and without enough distraction to where i can still see think create vision clearly but you're when you come up ideas come in mm -hmm. right oh no come back there we go. There we go. <laughs> We've. <laughs> yeah. That's the sign. That's the universe saying, "Hey, Mike, you've got a, you got another seven minutes here before your next one. You better, you better wind <laughs> yeah. this one up yeah. here. Like, I'm gonna yeah. make you freeze so you look at the clock. Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I do have about seven minutes. That was the the frozen. The it was like well, the face. <laughs> no, and it was so funny because I was just going to say, you know, earlier, I feel is I looked at the clock and I was like, oh, my gosh, we've already been talking for an hour. Yeah. And it just feels like on and on we go, you know, and this oh. is what this is what I love about. This is what I love about these shows. And, you know, hopefully I, I know my listeners, they they get into the vibe, too, and right. they get captivated. And it's like, whoa, an hour and a half just went by. And and it's it's what you said. It's you can tell. This is a creative outlet because conversation, understanding the way the mind works and, and just being able to have an open, open heart conversation on like some of the things that are top of mind that people, maybe we think about them, but we certainly don't consider them and we don't contemplate them. We might think about them. But if, for anybody listening, like think about the next time, if, if for one thing for me, think about the next time you do something creatively. Or the next time you come up to uh, a roadblock, you know, it's, it's supposed to go this way, it's going this way. Stop, slow down, 
and maybe just throw on some music and see if that can help you problem solve because oftentimes that'll help us as we've been talking about you and I Sarah we, we get into music can drop us into this hypnotic trance piece and it's from that state we have our greatest thoughts in the shower you know because we're we're not on guard music is the same thing music can be your shower so if you just drop a track in it doesn't even have to be frequency it'd be great if it was frequency stuff but if you just have a favorite song that you can dance to or you can move to to get away from the problem for a minute and then come back with a fresh set of eyes fresh set of ears you're gonna problem solve for the, till the, the bloody cows come home you got and it that's the point of being a creative that's a point of being a coach is being able to creatively problem solve for your clients creatively problem solve for yourself once you can do that oh man and to recognize when you're either in or out of that mm. and how to get yourself back into it huge it's the awareness right because we're going to dip we're going to drop in and off it, it's not like a forever thing you're going to mm -hmm. it's every, every think the mentality it's, it's all temporary those highs are high for a while and then they drop back down it's all temporary yeah. it's all going to come up and it's all going to come back uh, go back down it's, be okay with that be okay with being okay and then you're mm -hmm. going to be even better in the moment solving those um yeah. those little roadblocks that's that's my secret sauce <laughs> oh right and we right? we love it listen i know you have to go to your next call um, but please tell my listeners everything about you. I want to know the song that you're releasing, your coaching program, oh, uh, yeah. all of it. Please tell us where we can find you. Perfect. Well, the, the easiest way is to head over to bravebearmusic.com. Um, that's where you can find all the fun things uh, where it comes down to the offers that I've got. Um, being a musician that is a coach, my vehicle is just music. I'm still a coach right at heart. We're going on tour. We're in Australia in September. Um, doing a Canada wide, looking at a couple of spots down in the U S as well. Um, before that, over the summer here, um, the coaching program, just like we talked about earlier, it's the easiest gateway into this is learning how to podcast and use your voice to monetize your message. If you've got a message out there, the world needs to hear it. Um, I set up the, the pro podcast playbook for coaches, specifically entrepreneurs, coaches, creatives to learn how to develop the skills to be confident using their voice to monetize their message and connect and bring ideal clients into their world. From that point, sky's the limit. You can make a song, you can do anything. Once you get the confidence in using your voice, the instrument, you know, and listening to your heart, the number one instrument, you get your heart down, you get your voice down, you're a pro podcaster. That's for sure. So you can find out more about that at propodcastplaybook.com. So couple websites that'll take care of you all of my handles are are the same it's mike the schwartz um you can also find the artist brave bear yo brave bear so and of course we're, all we're this will all be linked there. in the show notes exactly easiest so place just it. reach out like yeah it's I like love chatting <laughs> yeah yeah he does guys and it's like you know you know you like when you hear something so people are gravitated towards that so if you feel drawn to mike which i do we've done work together we will continue to do work together. Okay. Um, we are aligned in the heart space, and that means all other things will be aligned. <laughs> there you go. And it, again, the important thing to take away is, guys, it's, there, there's no word for goodbye in, in Ojibwa. It's ciao, see you later. There's no goodbye. Right. So like when things don't work out the way they're supposed to, just take that as information and, and let the universe do its thing. Mm -hmm. It'll come when it's supposed to, right? The the guide is there when the student is ready. They ready. Say. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right? So yeah, it'd be great to hear from you. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to come and just riff with you. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I knew we'd have a jam. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like setting up a studio. I'm just like, well, I'm I got all my stuff here. I got We're my here. <laughs> hey man, I'm ready to rock. Yeah. yeah. Um the easiest way, like my seven word bio is I, I create pretty songs. Um, with uh, with cool instruments. So if you're into the music thing and you're a coach and you want guided meditations, I mean, I do all that stuff. I'm, I'm the bridge between music and, and uh, creativity with the, with the coaching world and entrepreneurship. So using audio branding is number one. Yes, yes, so good, beautiful. Mike, thank you so much. We'll, of course, be in touch, but you guys, uh, please check out all of Mike's information in the show notes. You know where to find him. You know where to find me. And as always, I love you. Please share this episode. Please rate the show. Do all of the things. And until next time, guys, we'll talk to you very soon. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Ignite the Spark Within. If this podcast brought you value or you think it would bring someone else value, please hit that share button. My mission is to reach and help as many people as I possibly can. And you just never know who could use that one good piece of information. And hey, if you have any topics, discussion questions, or ideas for future episodes, you can reach me directly at sarah at sparkflc.com and just write podcast in the subject line. And if you haven't already, please rate the podcast on your favorite podcast channel. This helps bring awareness to the show. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you're alerted for all future episodes. Please go ahead and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're interested in pursuing coaching for yourself, you can visit sparkflc.com for more information.